So, over the last few days, there have been some very interesting images popping up on the Twitter channel of Wiz, the uh, game director for Stellaris. And in these images were basically the representation of what the Fallen Empires are going to be like within the next update in Highline 1.3. Uh, we could call it Highline 1.3 because apparently 1.3 is just the Highline 1.3 is just the patch. However, there is going to be content coming with the 1.3, which is going to be a genuine uh, mini expansion, or as they're so foolishly internally referring to as content DLC. Now, I I don't work in marketing at the moment, but I personally would never use those three letters in any sort of way. Just call them expansions. This is just the word DLC has such a bad connotation attached to it. Regardless, let's move on towards what it's actually going on on this. There is going to be changes to the Fallen Empires. Now, apparently the Fallen Empires, according to Wiz, are his favorite part about the setting, the idea of a precursor empire millennia old, whose borders once stretch across the galaxy. Basically kind of how you're currently setting up your borders across the galaxy, and maybe one day you will become a Fallen Empire. And uh, their glory now faded, their advancements forgotten, but the power of their ancient fleets and technology is still above uh, any fledging empire, which is true. If you uh, manage to conquer any of the Fallen Empire worlds, you will find buildings that you cannot build at all because they're way too advanced and of course there is such a thing as the ring worlds which i find rather cool actually uh that you can't build them yourself now i see people online saying hey why can't we build them and there's mods for it etc so you know it, it, it's kind of cool that their technology is so far out of range it not even within a single place that you would ever be able to uh build some of their stuff Enigmatic actors on the galactic scene whose morals and ambitions have been warped by the ages of self-imposed isolation. For me, it invokes the great image of the Galactic Empire of the Foundation. Wow, the Foundation novels, they're quite good, actually. Uh, the Vorlons and the Shadows from Babylon 5 get out of this galaxy. Uh, I'm sure some of you will get that reference. However, the implementation of Fallen Empire was never quite matching their visions. Uh, quickly, just browsing through here, uh, the goals for a memorable experience for new players. Right now, the mid-game, for instance, is pretty bad, and it looks like fleshing out Fallen Empires and adding an element of unpredictability to them may be high, uh, was, have been high on the priority list ever since Wiz became game director. And knowing Wiz, he has some pretty crazy shit up his sleeve. So, starting off with feature number one, The Sleepers Awake, which is a free feature. It's kind of nice. Uh, an idea, The Fallen Empire Awakening, has been mentioned by Henrik Ferreus, uh, also known as Doom Bodark, a number of times during development, and something we'll be interested in doing, but apparently was not enough time to implement it, etc, etc, etc. So apparently in Heinlein, which is, you know, the 1.3 patch where this will be a feature of, all Fallen Empires have the chance to quote-unquote awaken as a result of certain external factors, such as endgame crises threatening them or the galaxy. So we're talking Prothorian Scourge, Unbidden, AI, who knows, maybe something else, who knows. Uh, regular empires growing too strong or technologically advanced, you know, this is their sandbox, and uh, if any other kids come in that are a little bit older than everybody, uh, all the other kids, then uh, he is going to kick them out of the sandbox. Uh, other fallen empires being defeated by regular empires, you know, when, when some guy's sandbox somewhere else is getting invaded by a bunch of kids, and you don't want them to, uh, you know, take your sandbox as well, then, you know, you have to kind of escalate things. And this is the best one. Other fallen empires awaken first. Now, apparently, uh, when a fallen empire is awakened, their personality, government, and country type change. So we get a complete overhaul, a complete shift on what they're like. So that big cuddly teddy bear over there could suddenly change to something else. Uh, their previous restriction on building ships, colonization, and conquering is lifted. So they will start spreading and become what we call an Awakened Empire. Awakened Empires have one of the following personalities. And here we go. Militant isolationists will become jingoistic reclaimers. Uh, they will try to conquer the galaxy, as uh, the name jingoistic reclaimers uh, implies. Holy Guardians could become doctrinal enforcers and will try to convert the galaxy with their faith. Now... With their faith is the best part about this little thing. The game currently doesn't have any faith in it whatsoever. 
So maybe we're looking at like a new feature here. Who knows? Uh, this could be pretty big. Enigmatic observers become benevolent interventionists and will try to force all empires to become a signatory in the Galactic Peace Treaty. Man, those are the, those are the guys that, you know, take all the toys away. Uh, probably you know, trying to force you to disarm or something like that. The keepers of knowledge become watchful regulators and will try to force other empires to accept their technological primacy. Fascinating. Hmm. Uh, we'll start to rapidly expand colonizing surrounding systems and conquering those races who will not submit to their demands. In each case, you will be able to avoid their wrath by submitting to them as a subject. Oh dear. Jingoistic reclaimers have thralls, tributaries who may not colonize but may fight amongst each other. I like that. That is cool. Uh, doctrinal enforce have dominion, tributaries uh, enforce spiritualist ethics and government. That's cool. Benevolent interference have signatories, subjects who will not wage war, enslave, or purge. Watchful regulators have satellites who must pay a share of their research to their overlord, requiring a ban to all AIs. That right there. This is cool stuff, and this is what I want. Basically, we're looking at more stuff in the mid-game uh, when it comes to uh, extra uh, additional threats. This is effectively, these four... Well, you can pretty much boil them into one. But they're basically a new endgame crisis. That's literally what this is. We have a new endgame crisis on, a crisis on our head. Uh, and this is cool. I like this. Look, I'm really looking forward to that. Once a fallen empire awakens, they will not stop until their galactic ambition is achieved or they are defeated by a coalition of lesser races. Uh, only a few events will cause them to change their plans, such as the presence of an endgame crisis or the start of what is called a war in heaven and apparently there's more about that below is a nice picture you know i'm sure this event picture will change because right now it's like the crystals etc etc armies being mustered okay fair enough personality changes which is a free feature among the four empire personalities were created for release two of them didn't really work out the keepers of knowledge and the enigmatic observers the holy guardians and militant isolationists restrict you from certain parts of space sure uh maybe deliciously tempted so yeah uh that's size 20 gaia world uh you can always find other ways to expand the keepers of knowledge uh they restrict play styles if uh, one okay blah, 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 blah. okay if one of them is in the galaxy you can uh, forget about having sentient robots uh, or else they will you know take you on uh, apparently it's not very fun ultimately it just limits the player's strategies in a rather arbitrary way. For this reason, we've decided to revamp the Keepers of Knowledge and the Enigmatic Observers. Uh, while not awakened, they will not concern themselves with restricting the overall action of lesser empires. Instead, they will pursue specific goals and ambitions that will sometimes require to interact with these very empires. These goals and actions take form in requests and demands. If you have established communication with the Keepers of Knowledge or Enigmatic Observers, they will sometimes contact you and give you a task, oh, that is cool, to hunt down a splinter faction of their species or recover a cache, or for those of you that are so inclined, cache of uh, technology from one of their own old worlds. That is actually more events. More events is good. I like that. Little, little pop-up events that make things more interesting. Or they will make a demand. For instance, one of your pops uh, for the Galactic Preserve. Okay. Hey there, little Bobby. Yeah, you just step on this, uh, this, this illuminated circle on the ground. Don't worry. Nothing will happen to you. Man, so they basically... They literally have an alien ant farm. That's cool. That's very nice. Uh, smooth criminal and all that. Uh, rip Michael Jackson. Completing their tasks will result in an opinion boost and a reward. So we finally have rewards. That's cool. And that's something that, you know, modders can use uh, to do mission rewards. Uh, such a technology or perhaps even a fallen empire ship when repeatedly re rebuffing their demands may result in a declaration of war. And I, 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 can, I can see people already looking down at this picture. I'm quickly going to scroll up here and it's taken... Uh, look at, uh, maybe. All right. Awakened versions, uh, well, not awakened, blah, 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 uh, rebuffing the demands, okay. Benevolent interventionists stay seeking to enforce galactic peace. Watchful regulators trying to regulate the levels of technology advancement. Cool. So, here we go with the big thing that I have been teased about quite significantly, which is the following. A small detail that I felt was lacking in the empires was the absence of any unique designs. 
blah de blah de blah and they all use the same avatars and eclipses, etc, etc, etc. So we're going to get new avatars and new things for Fallen Empires, which are only unique to them. Uh, the Fallen Empires ethos will now have their own unique designs uh, and build if they are awakened. Okay, that's cool. The Keeper of Knowledge will now exclusively use energy weapons, uh, while the military isolationists combine afterburners and projectile weapons to get close up to their foes to tear their ships up at point-blank range. Uh, additionally, a whole new ship class called Titans. Somebody has been playing a lot of EVE Online has been introduced as of now exclusive new weapon to the Fallen Empire arsenal. Titans are enormous ships, the equivalent of several battleships, extremely durable and armed with a vast array of lethal weapons. They will sometimes be found in the starting fleets of Fallen Empires, and Awakened Empires will be able to build a limited number of them. That right there is pretty hype. I like that. That's, that's, some, that's some good good shit. Now, we get to the first paid feature. The War in Heaven. We've talked about what happens when one fallen empire awakens, but what happens if two of them awakens? For those in the, with the DLC, or as they should probably call it, mini expansion, two empires of the opposing ethos, for example, a xenophobe and xenophile, awakening can result in a War in Heaven event triggering. This event will cause two awakened empires to go to war over the fate of the galaxy, dragging in the lesser species to fight on their side. So basically, let's say an Awakened Empire drags you into their... Let's, let's quickly scroll back here. So let's take a look here. Let's say the Jingoistic Reclaimers drags them in to be thralls. All right. So all of a sudden, you're a part of their uh, thralls and you kind of have to deal with them. Then all of a sudden, the Benevolent Interventionists with their Sikintories and all like, Yo, dudes over there, this ain't cool. We're going to go to war. That right there is the war in heaven. That is a massive war on all fronts, which is pretty crazy, if you ask me. Now, this will be a paid feature as well. Uh, all empires will be presented with a choice. Ooh, oh, it gets even better. All empires will be presented with a choice. Join one of the awakened factions and bet on their victory. Uh, join the League of Non-Aligned Empires and hope you can stand against both of them or stand alone and risk being trampled underfoot when the war comes your way. Unlike a normal war, the war in heaven is a cataclysmic event that will not end uh, once a few worlds have been captured or a few battles have been won. It will be, and this is ad verbatim, a fight to the death that will only end when one awakened empire stand victorious or both have been subjugated. If one of the Awakened Empires wins, they will show favor to those who supported them and be merciless to those who opposed them. Well, there you have it. The Fallen Empires are going to get a massive overhaul in Heinlein, and uh, it is going to be very, very schmexy. I'm looking forward to that. Apparently that is all for this week. Next week we'll be talking about some changes to the space creatures, how they spawn, how they scale, and what is coming. In Heinlein, I'm going to leave you with this picture right here of this menace that may or may not be inspired by something from the game Mass Effect. I'm not entirely sure, but uh, whenever I see this, I think by myself, Sovereign is coming, and he will he, he has willed your existence, and he wills your demise. Until next time, take a good care of yourselves, and don't get, but get blasted by fallen empires. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this episode about Stellaris Death Diaries, be sure to check out the previous ones which cover all the Heinlein stuff, mostly about the ship changes as well as a couple other things. There's two of them, at least at this moment in time, and uh, I hope you do enjoy them. And uh, be sure to uh, like and subscribe to the channel.